What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku. As well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Back on the Boss Man Show, a friend of the show, Coach Bob Marlin. Louisiana Raging Cajuns got a big win last night against Louisiana Marlin and Roberts, the Warhawks. So, Coach Marlin, good to see you, man. How is down there in the Cajun Dome area, man? Everything's good. As we talked about before we came on, the sun's out, and the team's winning, and things are going well. And, Coach, you got to be happy with your team last night, winning against Monroe, uh, the Warhawks, with your rivals, and uh, they, they made some runs at you, and your team stood those runs and kept the lead, extended the lead as, as well without those runs. Talk about that was your team last night, man, beating your rivals, man. It was a big game for us because we've been playing well, and we got to remember to keep doing the things that we've done that put us in this position. And uh, Monroe had won three in a row coming in. They're, they're our rival in conference, and uh, they've got a tough team. Coach Richard's been there for a long time. We're actually the top two winning his coaches in Sunbelt history. And he is uh, always brings a good team down here. So we knew we'd have to fight him till the end. And we were able to, to hold him off. The game was pretty much in check the whole, whole night, but it did go from 19 down to 10, I think late. And then they scored at the end to make it eight. And coach, what I see, like I've talked to you about this as well, coach, you balance on scoring again. Uh, you got five guys, the figures score on your roster. That's why last night, Four of them again, double figures, 19 apiece. And you had uh, my man doing a good job, but 19 for you, Kobe doing a good job, Joe doing a good job for you, man. So, about just having that balance scoring where teams can just key in on one guy, you cause them conflict and look for guys who can score that ball on the off three levels of, of, the, of the court there, coach. We were asked uh, this question last night in the press conference post game, and uh, it's nice to have a guy that can go get 30. Uh, 25 or 30 any night but when you have five guys that average 10 and one of those guys or two of those guys gets 25 it's the same thing so we really like our balance our, our, we've got a good team you know the, the strength of the team is is the team and uh, the, these guys play together you know they're, they're connected 
last year's group was really connected. And this group, I think, is connected even more. So we're not quite as talented as we were last year. We don't have any seniors on our roster. First time in 50 years we haven't had a senior. And in today's time, that's really uncharacteristic because of all the grad students, the COVID extra years, the transfers. Uh, but we've got a tight group that's been together for, for a few years, and they're playing well. No doubt, Coach Brown, I feel it's so, so important to have guys who have been through those fires together, man, because you don't, you don't build out confidence in each other once you put what's playing together as well. And do you feel like, did you see it's kind of in summertime, Coach, of them working out together, kind of get a feel like, hey, we may have some even this year, not talented talk while we may have some based on what you're seeing in the summer and fall workouts there. Yeah, absolutely. It starts in the spring. And in the summer, when you add the new pieces, you got to sprinkle in, you know, a few new ones. And we, we try to recruit high character guys. And we've been fortunate and had good success with that over the years. And uh, they adapt to the team and uh, love being part of the team and trying to win a championship together. No doubt. And coach, also, man, you know, you went seven and five of non league play. And, you know, that's growing up 500. Talk about that. Preparing your guys for the Sun Bill, same different styles of play, playing some role games, some different side games, so you can get ready for this gauntlet of the Sun Belt, which you've got to off to a hot start so far. Well, we, we, uh, our second game, we were in the MAC Challenge. We played at Toledo and we're, we're up 12 with about nine minutes to go and got beat. And that was really tough for our team, but it helped us uh, get get a little bit better. And then we played a tough non-conference schedule as far as mid-majors go. Uh, we, we played Toledo, obviously, and then we played uh, Wright State uh, down in a tournament in Fort Myers, and, and they beat us by six. And then we turned around and beat Buffalo. And then the next night we beat Long Beach State. And Long Beach State's had a really good year. They beat Michigan and DePaul and – uh, uh, a lot of good teams out there. So, and then we went to Sanford and we knew how good Sanford was because we beat them last year at home and uh, they're undefeated at home right now. I want to say they're like 15 and 0 at home. They played a ton of home games. And uh, then we went to Louisiana Tech, lost by five, and Louisiana Tech has not lost a home game. And then we went to McNeese and lost by two, and they haven't lost a home game so we've played some really good teams and I think that helped prepare us for conference and the last game was uh, right before Christmas we played at Rice and uh, we were able to beat those guys we shot the cover off the ball that night and beat those guys by 17 and that was a good win for us and they got a great win last night they beat Memphis in Memphis yeah, Harder played the fans more and beat Fitty Harder with those on that tour, man. So, yeah, Scott doing a good job over there. Coach, you kind of missed it, man. Uh, I, want to, I want to follow up with something you said, Coach. Louisiana D1 basketball is very tough, like right now, with, with, with what you're doing. Dante doing it, Gremlin, the young man down at Nichols down there. Dave does a good job South of Louisiana. Of course, Will Wade and McNeese, all those. All talent. So, I'm about this, how many great, great coaches you are. In Louisiana and how the basketball D one down there is so a top notch right now. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing about Louisiana. We are having a great year this year. A lot of teams are playing good basketball, and that's good to see because when that happens, uh, it's just strength strengthens the whole state uh, from a basketball standpoint. It really helps the younger guys, in, in my opinion. So uh, we're excited to continue to play well and and. Uh, stack it up against these other teams. And one thing our group does, we have a organization called Louisiana Association of Basketball Coaches. And every coach in the, in the state from a college level, doesn't even have to be the Division One level, but uh, from NAI level, junior college, we get together in the spring for a day and have meetings. And we really push and support each other uh, and, and I think it's showing this year. 100%, Coach. You know what, Coach, as well, man, uh, for you, uh, when you got a non-league play, uh, come off of Christmas break there, kind of talk to me about what kind of, kind of switch went off of your team's head to kind of, to kind of figure it out and play well and kind of say it jail the right way because I know this is the most one time a year for us. Sunbelt play, getting ready for that tournament <laughs> down there in Pensacola, man, uh, in March there here. Yeah, well, um, 
you know, we opened up at Marshall in conference play this year. And uh, the 20, I guess it was the 30th, right to end of the year. And those guys, we had beaten them here to win 10 in a row last year in a great game. And we were neck and neck with them in a conference race. And we wind up getting a two seed. They got the three seed in the conference tournament. So they were waiting on us for sure. Uh, they were in the weeds waiting. And we, we just got blitzed, really. We didn't play well at all. We didn't shoot the ball. And we got beat by 14 points. And we're never really in the game. Uh, and And then coming back and playing James Madison at home, who's ranked in the top 20. Uh, you know, we're down one and got the ball the minute to go and don't don't finish it. Can't can't win. And it broke our home winning streak, which was the second longest in the nation at the, at the time at, at 19 games. Uh, but the conference games have been tough and uh, we've got some tough ones left. And we're, we're excited about starting the second half. Last night was the first game of the second half. And Coach Marlin, also, man, uh those games you've been having, it. you know, I both know you can't really practice to do this in practice, but it's always close, close games. So it's getting your guys experience playing close games now. It's going to February and March, getting the confidence to execute, you teach them on the film what to do for us to split those blackouts, find an open man, taking the right shots, and doing the right rotations, attendance, scout, discipline. Uh, about that, man, getting your team experience with close games, come on, on the right side of these, these, these wins, and as we get the games become more important down the stretch here. They're extremely important. The special situations uh, are huge in a close game. And uh, fortunately, last year and this year, we haven't had many close games where it's come down the last possession. The McNeese game did this year, uh, but we've not not had that very often. So I like being prepared every day in practice. We work on those things. We work on free throw blockouts, as you said, pressure free throw blockouts almost daily. And uh, when we're ready, uh, when we need it, I think we'll be ready. So, but so far we haven't needed it. We've won several games by double figures. And Coach, why don't I talk about uh, Kobe, man? I know he's, he's he's one of your top flight scorers, man. And uh, talk about what he's meant to your program on and off the floor and his leadership skills for his teammates. He's done a great job for us. Uh, he's been with us a long time. He's overcome uh, several knee injuries. And he's playing at a high level. He was all conference two years ago, and people forget about that. And then uh, got hurt, missed part of the last year. He came in in conference play, came off the bench for us. And then when we got to the NCAA tournament, played Tennessee, he jumped up and scored 15 points off the bench in about a three minute span, uh, which really helped us stay in that basketball game. So I can't say enough about Kobe. He's a leader, he works hard, he's a great young man. Got a got a uh, degree in business, working on his MBA, and uh, he's having fun because he's he's sat on the sidelines for a long time, and now he's out there playing and having good success and really shooting the ball at a high level. And coach, your team's doing a good job of shooting as well. Thirty-seven percent on, on, on threes, and you know it will just make a defense have to decide whether we're going to close out hard or short. They give you open that dribble, dribble drive for you as well, so. Talk about getting those young men shooting the ball, shooting it well from free, so you call it defense conflicts. They have to decide what they're going to do with all your scorers out there. Well, we work on three-point shooting every day, obviously, and and as well as free throws. And, and we've done a good job with both of those to date. Um, but I think it's important that the guys spray it around and and make the extra pass. And, and, and I think, again, being connected, this team's super connected, I think – that makes it easier uh, to, to give one up, a good one for a great one. Um, and last year we were really good shooting a three-point shot and we played through the post for the most time. We throw it inside of Jordan Brown and then people would collapse at double or even triple team and then we kick it out. And I think in the middle of February last year, we were number two in the country in three-point field goal percentage. And we didn't take a ton, but when we took them, we made them. And this year, it's a little different. We're playing through the post and Hosanna a little bit, uh, but we're also spraying it around more on the perimeter. 100% coach. And also on the, on, on the glass bed is uh, Joe Charles in the glass for you, coach. You know, and I both know this as well, coach. Defensively, you don't get to the rebounds. It's not over yet. So, go back to the glass defensively and crash that's offensively. Make sure you get extra possessions as well so you can get your team more opportunity to make, make those three-point bombs, man. 
No, it's huge. And, and Joe Charles has done a tremendous job. He's a great defensive player. He's a career 38% three-point shooter. Uh, and this year we ask him to rebound more because we, we're not as big as we've been. And he's second league in league games and rebounding. I mean, the, the, the young man just does an outstanding job. He's smart. He's uh, one of the smartest players that I've coached. He can see things happening on the floor uh, like a coach, and he's able to help his team win. And uh, Joe certainly impacts winning in a lot of different ways. 100% coach. And also, you're doing a good job of limiting your turnovers. You and I both know the loud ball turnovers, which you don't want. And you can't give you a chance to try to get the run out to easy basketball on you. So, the value with you, even though you're playing the style you're playing, making the three pointers, and also those shots over when you take a bad, quick shot, it's like the I wants to be. So, talk about limiting those things and how you could job your team doing at that as well, being conscious of that as you all play the way you play. Definitely a bad shot creates a break for the other other team. So, uh, put your transition defense in a the mix there. It's hard. Uh, so, we, we need to take good shots and and, uh, you know, going to continue to do that and, and try to make sure that uh, we can get back defensively. And live ball turnovers this year, I, I feel like we've done a really good job. I and mean, we had a stretch there where we, we turned it over a few times too many, but we've been able to get by. Uh, but to start the win streak that we're on, we played at Jonesboro in a hostile environment. We had five for the game. And uh, that was big. And then we had another single digit. I think we had a nine in one of the games. But in our third, fourth conference game, we played at Troy. And we had a uh, one-point lead in the ball with two minutes to go. And we lost that game. And we had 20 turnovers. And the turnovers cost us the game. I mean, and there are a lot of bad, you know, there are offensive fouls and illegal screens and some things that the it's in the judgment of the official uh, for a turnover. Uh, but, you know, we've limited that. And I'm, I'm going to credit our guard play, Themis Folks and Kentrell Garnett, Michael Thomas have done a really good job protecting the basketball. Hey, Coach Moore, let me ask you about um, the block charge rule. Uh, uh, how how do you just to move where you guys can't take, take charges anymore? People have to put their hands up and hands to the sky and wall up rather than try to just go take a charge. How is it you know, just for your guys making sure they defend on the ball and not try to come over you know, on help side and get a charge that is not really calling? Yeah, and, and certainly it's something we worked on early in the year with the new rule change. We wanted to make sure that – we were walling up when we can if we're inside a restricted area. We work on that almost daily for about two or three minutes. And our guys have done the best job of any team I've coached of doing that. So I think that's really, really helped us. Uh, but the block charge, last year I thought everything was a charge, and this year everything's a block pretty much. And the officials are calling it the way they've been told. And if, if a guy plants one foot and comes into you and you're a secondary defender, he can even create the contact, and it's going to be a, a block. No doubt. And Coach, I got one more for you, man. Uh, South Alabama is coming to the Cajun K- 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 Dome on Saturday, man. Uh, Richard Rowley and some guys. We'll talk about some of those guys on the film as you prepare to this next home game, man, to keep this history going for you guys. Yeah, we're going to give the guys off a little bit today. They're going to watch film, and that's it. Do some stretching with our strength coach and maybe some yoga. And then – come back tomorrow and, and get ready for Saturday's game. Last week we had a power outage at the Cajun Dome. Wow. And we <clears throat> it's 12 minutes, 12 minutes to go before the tip against Arkansas State. We had a couple thousand people here. And uh, somebody hit a, a transformer and it blew out all the power in the area for about four hours. So we moved those games last week to Friday afternoon and then Saturday and Sunday afternoon. Uh, and that's how we played. So we we used we're used to having Sunday off. We had a day off in a while. These guys have been working hard, and uh, we're gonna give them some time today. Sounds good, Coach. Well, Coach, I hope we talk again in March, man. I mean, did last year, man, going through the tournament, man. So you know, my favorite guest had on the show when I was a little chatting with you, Coach. So hopefully we'll do this again. And watch after you go to the big dance again, man. Well, we look forward to talking again too. And if we continue to win and get in the top four, I think we'll have a, a, a good shot at winning the tournament. It's going to be a great tournament. We, we, there's some really good teams, and a lot of teams are fairly equal. Uh, but good players, good coaches, uh, good venue in Pensacola, and uh, looking forward to the Sun Belt Championship. 
Yes, did that coach always was fun, man. Yeah, you bet. I appreciate you. Anytime, coach. Stay, keep that heat on. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV, covering content and hot topics from A to Z, sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews, you name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker dot com backslash bs3 network you are now tuned to bs3 network what's up good people but online is your number one source for all your betting needs the latest odds lines and matchup reports for baseball boxing golf and more Bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online. When the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your Radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.